Let's get right into it. Number 8. Why do we have to sleep? Scientists still don't fully know why we have to sleep. They know what happens when we don't sleep. We get cranky, clumsy, and eventually our brains turn into mush. Scientists think sleep might be like a cleaning service for your brain. While you're sleeping, your brain is supposedly washing away all the junk that built up during the day. Your brain cells actually shrink while you sleep, creating more space for the brain's cleaning fluid to wash away the garbage. But if you stay awake too long, your brain starts to eat itself. Your brain literally starts digesting its own cells. If sleep wasn't absolutely crucial, wouldn't at least one species have evolved to not need it? Being awake all the time would be a huge advantage. You could hunt more, eat more, and never have to worry about being eaten while taking a nap. Yet every single animal needs to become completely helpless for hours each day. Even jellyfish sleep, and they don't even have brains. So whatever sleep does, it's so important that nature made sure everything needs it, and nobody knows exactly why. Number 7. Why fingers get wrinkly in the bath. You know how your fingers look like tiny raisins after spending too long in the bath? For years, scientists told us it was just water soaking into our skin, making it puffy and wrinkled. Turns out they were completely wrong. Your fingers actually get wrinkly because your nervous system tells them to. It's like your body has a built-in program that says, Hey, we're in water. Time to get wrinkly. When this happens, the blood vessels under your skin start squeezing together, which makes your skin scrunch up. But nobody knows why we evolved to do this. Some scientists think the wrinkles work like tire treads, helping us grip stuff better when we're wet. They even did experiments showing people with wrinkly fingers are better at picking up wet marbles. So maybe our ancestors needed this to grab slippery fish or climb wet rocks without falling to their death. But other scientists aren't buying it. They ask, if this is so helpful, why don't our fingers stay wrinkly all the time? And why just our fingers and toes? The truth is, we still don't know for sure. Number 6. Why we yawn when others yawn. You're sitting in class trying to focus when suddenly someone yawns. Before you know it, the whole class starts yawning like they're part of some weird yawning orchestra. Scientists call this contagious yawning, and they still can't agree on why it happens. Some think it's your brain's way of staying cool, like a built-in air conditioner. When you yawn, cool air rushes in and helps lower your brain temperature. Other scientists think it's all about being part of the group. Like when early humans lived in caves, if one person yawned to stay alert, everyone else would yawn too. It's your brain's way of saying, I got your back, cave buddy. Even dogs can catch yawns from humans. That's right. Your yawn is so powerful it can control other species. Babies start yawning before they're even born. Tiny humans floating in the womb are already practicing their yawns. And once you start yawning, you can't stop it. Try to stop a yawn halfway through. It's like trying to stop a sneeze. Your body just goes, nope, we're doing this. Number 5. Why ice cream gives you brain freeze. You're enjoying your favorite ice cream on a hot summer day. You take a big bite because it's just too good to eat slowly. Suddenly your head feels like someone just stuck an icicle through your brain. Scientists actually know exactly what's happening here, but they have no idea why our bodies do this. When you eat something super cold, it touches the roof of your mouth. Your body freaks out and thinks it's under attack. The tiny blood vessels in your mouth quickly squeeze tight, then suddenly expand again. There's this big nerve in your face called the trigeminal nerve that sees all this chaos. Think of this nerve as the drama queen of your face. It loves to overreact. This nerve is connected to both your mouth and your forehead. So when it feels the chaos in your mouth, it gets confused and tells your brain the pain is coming from your head. It's like if someone kicked your foot, but you felt the pain in your elbow. But nobody knows why we evolved to have this response. What survival advantage does it give us to get a splitting headache from eating ice cream too fast? Maybe it's just our body's way of teaching us table manners. It's basically saying, Oh, you want to inhale that ice cream like a vacuum cleaner? Here's a headache to help you reconsider your life choices. Number 4. Curly hair versus straight hair. You'd think with all our fancy science, we'd have this one figured out. But this playground question still baffles researchers. They know genes are involved, but it's like trying to solve a puzzle where half the pieces are missing. Scientists have found a few key genes that are supposed to be the masterminds behind hair shape, but just when they think they've got it figured out, they discover there might be as many as 80 different genes involved. That's right, 80. It's like your hair is running a whole committee meeting just to decide whether to curl or not. Here's where it gets really weird. Curly hair was the original human default setting. So if you've got straight hair, somewhere in your family tree, one of your ancestors had a genetic mutation. Scientists think straight hair might have evolved because it was better at keeping heads warm in cold climates, since it lets natural oils travel down the strands more easily. But even with all these theories, Scientists still can't fully explain why one kid has corkscrew curls 
while their sibling has hair straight as a ruler. Number 3. The Purpose of Dreams You know those weird movies your brain plays at night while you're sleeping? Despite all our fancy brain scanning machines, we still don't know for sure why our brains do this. Your brain is actually super busy while you're dreaming. It's almost as active as when you're awake, like it's running a marathon while you're lying there drooling on your pillow. Some scientists think dreams are your brain's way of solving problems, like a midnight therapy session with yourself. But no theory fully explains why you dreamed about your math teacher turning into a talking sandwich. We do know that if you stop someone from dreaming, they start acting really weird. So weird, they might not even remember their own name. Even animals dream. You can watch a sleeping dog run and bark in their sleep, probably chasing some dream squirrel. Scientists have even found that birds dream about their songs, practicing their tunes while they sleep. So yeah, we spend about six years of our lives dreaming, and we still don't know why. Number two, why we like music. Ever notice how babies start bopping their heads to music before they can even talk? It's like we're born with tiny DJs in our brains. But music isn't necessary for survival. You can't eat it, and it won't keep you warm. So why did our ancestors waste energy making music when they could have been hunting? Scientists are scratching their heads trying to figure this out. Every single human culture ever discovered has had music. From tribes deep in the Amazon to modern cities, people just can't stop making beats. Some scientists think music might have been like prehistoric social media. It brought groups together and helped them bond. Kind of like how people at concerts feel connected even if they're total strangers. But that still doesn't explain why music makes our brains release happy chemicals like dopamine. That's the same chemical you get from eating chocolate or falling in love. It's like your brain is treating Baby Shark the same way it treats winning the lottery. Some researchers think our love for music might be an evolutionary accident. Like maybe our brains developed to process language and emotions, and music just hijacked those circuits. Basically, music found a back door into our pleasure center and decided to throw a party. Number 1. Why animals can't talk. So your dog is sitting there, giving you that look like he's got the secrets of the universe trapped in his tiny brain, but all you get is a woof. We don't fully understand why animals can't talk like us. Animals actually have really complex ways of communicating. Dolphins have special whistles that act like names for each other. Bees do little dances to tell their friends where to find the good flowers. But none of them can put together sentences like we do. We have this special ability to take a bunch of words and mix them up in endless new ways. For example, if I teach you a made-up word like wug, you instantly know how to say wugs. Try teaching that to a parrot and they'll just repeat wug until you give them a cracker. Animals are stuck with a limited menu of sounds and signals. It's like they're using emojis while we're writing novels. Your dog can tell you food now or danger, but they can't tell you about that weird dream they had last night. Scientists have tried teaching chimps to talk, but after years of research, the best they could do was teach them to ask for bananas. Meanwhile, humans can write entire novels about sparkly vampires. It's like nature gave us the premium talking package and left everyone else with the basic version. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.